Galileo Galilei was one of history's most remarkable and well-known personalities. Physicist, mathematician, and astronomer, his methodologies, findings, and works made him one of the most important names in science of all time. He was born on February the 15th, 1564, in Pisa, Italy. He was the son of musician Vincent Bonaiut Galilei and Julia. The couple had seven children, but only four survived. While Galileo Galilei's family was not affluent, they did their best to provide him with a good education from an early age. He started to display his genius at an incredibly early age, as he was a creative child with original ideas. Since his father was a musician, he had the chance to explore art and painting, something in which he was remarkably skilled. But his father, Vincent, was aware of the difficulties of an artistic career, preferred to urge his son to take a different path. In 1581, Galileo started to study medicine at the University of Pisa. During his early days there, Galileo learned about the works of famous mathematicians, such as Archimedes and Euclid, with whom he had soon become closely familiar. Throughout his university experience, Galileo started to argue against the mainstream views. This behavior angered his professors, prompting one of his teachers to warn his father about the student's brashness. While attending medical school, Galileo also took private math lessons with Ostilio Ricci, becoming increasingly acquainted with numbers. His career in medicine obviously did not last long, and after four years, Galileo ended up changing his field of study and started studying mathematics despite his father's objections. To earn a living, he started giving private lessons in Florence. When he traveled to the Italian capital in 1587, he gained recognition for his knack for numbers and his broad scientific knowledge. Galileo began teaching at the University of Pisa in 1589. In his new role as a teacher, Galileo kept a high profile as a disprover of the prevailing ideas of his time. His insights into the world, science, and nature often made people around him simply stunned. He questioned and even criticized the use of the robe, traditionally worn in university circles. While working as a professor, Galileo was said to have performed an experiment to study gravity by throwing two objects from the Leaning Tower of Pisa to prove how the force of the Earth attracted all bodies equally. Galileo started teaching at the University of Padua in 1592, where his ideas gained more acceptance. He started to enjoy the admiration and recognition of professors and students alike. The Italian mathematician had a relationship with a Venetian woman called Marina Gamba, and they had three children called Virginia and Vincenzo, yet they never married. The Italian mathematician heard about the extraordinary invention of the telescope in the Netherlands in 1609 and was thrilled to learn about it, seeing how useful it would be for science. While he had never seen or handled one, Galileo was delighted by this invention and built a similar device with refinements and a greater range than the original model. Galileo's fine-tuned telescope amazed his contemporaries. Galileo constantly used this instrument to make important astronomical observations, leading him to make remarkable findings and discoveries, later referred to in his book The Celestial Messenger. It was written in Latin and was widely sold in a fleeting period. Galileo wrote about stars that had never been seen before. After several observations, Galileo also found out about the satellites of the planet Jupiter. A surprising discovery by Galileo Galilei was that the moon was irregularly shaped. In other words, its surface was not as smooth as was believed at the time. Through his observations, the remarkable Italian developed an astronomical perspective that was fundamentally unique and different from that of most of his contemporaries. Apart from improving the telescope, as an inventor, he also perfected the lunet, and in 1597, Galileo Galilei devised the geometric compass, an invention that earned him some money. The tireless Italian mathematician was constantly conducting research and documenting his theses in his workshop, using a range of scientific apparatuses to help him in his research. Galileo pursued a research method that was essentially different from the Aristotelian and theological legacy of the time. His stance against Aristotle's philosophy was set out in some of his books, such as Discourses on Bodies and Water, and History and Demonstration of Sunspots, 
Alongside this position against a Greek thinker, Galileo shared the ideas of Nicholas Copernicus, a notable Polish astronomer and mathematician who championed the heliocentric theory, which held that the Sun was the center of the solar system, in direct opposition to geocentrism, a model which considered that the Earth was motionless at the heart of the universe. By then, heliocentric cosmology provided an opposing view to that held by the Church, and Nicholas Copernicus was declared a heretic. Through his study of the heliocentric theory, Galileo produced his tidal theory, claiming that the tides were proof of the Earth's movement. Curious and committed to understanding the movement of bodies, the Italian ran an experiment in which he made balls roll down a slope. He then concluded that gravitational acceleration acted the same way on objects, regardless of their structure. Only by acting externally could the speed or direction of bodies be altered. Aside from these examples, Galileo's legacy of studies and theories is huge. He wrote several works, such as Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, Two New Sciences, Letters on Sunspots, and others. His books and studies were revolutionary for both astronomy and physics. During his lifetime, the Church enjoyed authoritarian power and a powerful social influence in Europe. Galileo's ideas soon began to bother the religious authorities. All his life, the Italian was under constant persecution and had political and religious foes. The Church considered Copernicus' work and ideas to be heretical in 1612. Even so, the following year, Galileo published a book in which he expressed his agreement with Copernicus's ideas. By and large, his outlook on the world, the content of his works, and his experiments increasingly disturbed some people associated with the Church, and this soon began to grow into a dangerous situation for Galileo Galilei. In 1616, he was called to stand officially before the Church and Cardinal Bellarmine. On this occasion, the Holy Office made clear how precarious his condition was. He was then advised to stop defending and speaking his ideas, which were considered heretical. He signed documents to end this and pledged to drop some of his ideas and thoughts, as the Church advised him to do in a very threatening manner. As time went by, while Galileo continued to write and carry out his research and reading, he took on a more socially low-key stance. Nevertheless, in 1632, he published a book called Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, Ptolemaic and Copernican. In it, Galileo once again discussed the Copernican theory, essentially contrary to the dogmas of the Church. In 1633, he was once again asked to report to Rome. His health was fragile at the time, but he was forced to travel to the Italian capital. There, he was put on trial for a six-month period. During this process, he was interrogated and tried to explain himself, but his arguments were not enough to avoid punishment. On July the 23rd, his book Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, Ptolemaic and Copernican, was banned from circulation and deemed blasphemous. Galileo was also in prison and had to repeat seven psalms a week for three years. He was then sentenced to house arrest. One reason the church turned against Galileo was the fact that in some of his writings, he made some critical interpretations and observations about the Bible that were widely different from what the church advocated to its believers. Galileo Galilei's prolific life ended with a great deal of suffering. In 1634, he was shaken by the death of his daughter, Virginia, who passed away at 34. Despite this loss, he carried on with his work and completed the book, The Discourses on Mathematical Demonstrations Relating to Two New Sciences, which is considered to be one of his most important publications. He relied on the help of his disciples, Vincenzo Viviani and Evangelista Torricelli, who were well with him in his old age and helped him at the end of his life. As a result of his frequent use of his telescope for astronomical observations, including sunspots, Galileo lost his sight, something he greatly suffered from. Galileo died on January the 8th, 1642, in Florence. The body of the renowned Italian remains to this day in the Church of Santa Croce in the same Italian city. Following Galileo's death, some people close to him wanted to build a monument in his honor. The church, however, through Pope Urban VIII, quickly opposed this idea and stopped it from happening, claiming that Galileo was a harmful social influence. Finally, in 1992, 
The Church, through Pope John Paul II, recognized its error in condemning Galileo, apologizing for the mistakes, attacks, and violent acts that were committed against him by the Catholic Church over time. Galileo was a visionary thinker whose breakthroughs altered the course of science. He passionately believed in the universe's mathematical language and prized observation and experimentation as key processes in the scientific method 